My name is Dr. Richard Roberts. I'm head of the Vaccine Preventable Disease Programme in Public Health Wales. And um, over the next few minutes, I want to take you through some of the uh, evidence around extending the dose interval between the first and second doses of coronavirus vaccines um, and the reason for doing that. So I'll begin by looking at uh, some background information. Then I'll look at the statement that JCVI have put out and, and tell you where to find that and then uh, apply some of the practical lessons from that science. So um, we're now in a position in the UK that we have two very good uh, coronavirus vaccines that are highly effective against uh, COVID-19 disease um, and also highly effective uh, against the severe outcomes of, of COVID-19 disease, hospitalisation and death. So um, the JCVI have over the last few days uh, put out a statement to support the recent decision to uh, extend the dose interval from the standard interval for the Pfizer vaccine, um, which was three weeks, uh, up to 12 weeks. And this has been facilitated by a change in the authorization by MHRA. And the authorization for the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine um, allows it to be uh, given at a dose interval of, of four to 12 weeks. And we look a little bit at the, the science uh, behind that. So, the JCVI states that individuals receive high levels of short term protection from a single dose of vaccine, um, and that is a consequence of, of both of these vaccines being highly effective. Um, and you can uh, you can see that statement uh, online and I will give you a link at the end of the, of the chat as to where to find that. So for the AstraZeneca vaccine, um, there is data um, in the uh, information for healthcare professionals on COVID vaccine. Uh, under table uh, on page seven, under table two, um, showing that the vaccine efficacy uh, from uh, three weeks after dose one is 73%. The, the vaccine efficacy for one dose of Pfizer BioNTech vaccine has been published at 52%, um, but that 52% includes cases in the first 14 day period before most vaccines are effective. Um, and if you just take the period from 15 to 21 days, so that is the, the week before the second dose, um, and you take data that is published uh, in the US FDA authorization, so this is uh, available online, you can work out that the, uh, the protection from one dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is actually 89%. Experts on, on the JCVI uh, believe that high levels uh, of short-term protection uh, from a single dose will cover the 12 week interval between the first and second dose. And what that allows us to do uh, is to increase the number of individuals um, who receive uh, the first dose. And I'll come back just to an illustration of, of what that means. Um, and there, there won't be any uh, long term effect uh, on the efficacy of a two dose course. So one dose will protect you short term, um, but you, for that long term protection, you need uh, the second dose. Um, and in fact, the second dose may actually, if you extend the interval, may actually give you uh, more protection. So if you um, were to go online to the Public Health Wales website um, and then go to the vaccine section, uh, the coronavirus on the homepage, and then look at the health and social care professional section and the FAQs there, you'll find an FAQ with a link to the JCVI statement. Um, and I just want to uh, take a, a short look at that statement um, and uh, just take you, give you top lines from it. So the, the background is uh, this rapid rise in cases that we all know for the UK uh, and having two very effective vaccines, but not enough to quickly deliver the vaccine to all those who need it. So because we have these uh, uh, data that show that one dose is highly effective, um, you then have the option of uh, giving one dose for short term protection uh, to as many people as possible instead of using a shorter interval for a second dose. Um, and the consequences of that will be that many more people receive a first dose. And one way to think about that is um, if you have two individuals um, who um, and uh, two vaccines, uh, you have the option of giving both vaccines to one individual um, at a short interval. Um, and they, for example, with the Pfizer uh, BioNTech vaccine will be 95% protected, um, or you could give one dose to both individuals um, and they would be 89% protected. And it's likely that with both regimes, you have high levels of protection against hospitalizations and death. Um, and similarly with the 
uh, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. So the levels of protection from the first and second doses are actually both around 70%. Um, and again, high levels of protection against hospitalization and death. So that is the, the, the choice, if you like, when you have a limited supply of vaccine and uh, you have very effective vaccines with one dose. So practically, that allows us to extend the interval up to 12 weeks for those who've had one dose. Those individuals are very well protected for that interval. And then the 12, uh, the, the second dose within 12 weeks will give them a boost for long term protection. You can work out the number of lives that you would save by this policy. Um, and uh, if you were to do that for Wales, you would uh, come up with a figure of hundreds of lives saved in addition to hospitalizations um, and so on through uh, adopting this policy. One thing that's not proposed is to mix and match the vaccines. So uh, it is in, uh, recommended that you have the second dose of the vaccine with the same uh, manufacturer as the first, um, and you would only ever consider using an alternative vaccine if there simply wasn't uh, the same vaccine available to give a second dose, for example, because of some manufacturing failure. So I just finally want to uh, finish off uh, just reminding you of that link on the Public Health Wales website where you'll find that statement uh, and a summary. Um, and to thank uh, everybody who has uh, had a, uh, a first dose um, and is now being asked to postpone their second. It's, it's a, a challenge to do that, um, but the data is there to support that decision. Um, and also to uh, thank the health boards for the sort of huge logistic challenge of uh, extending that interval and contacting everybody. But the consequences of doing that are that we can protect many, many more lives um, through that policy. Uh, thank you.